1. I used to work as an assistant store manager at a retailer of primarily watches and leather goods. At the particular location where I worked, we had three points of entry, and never much staff working, two to five depending on the time of day and day of the week. The floor plan was set up so that even if you were trying really hard, while also not helping any customers, you could barely see two entrances at once. Additionally, we only kept about 20% of our display stock under glass, had no security guard, and our watches were all in the $500 to $2,000 range. It was an LP nightmare, and uniformed officers and detectives got pretty used to visiting at least monthly, if not weekly, during busy shopping seasons, to take down theft reports and follow up on them. It was stressful, tedious, and probably the worst part of the job. One busy summer weekend day, when I was the only manager on duty, we noticed two watches were missing from their displays, so I had to step off the floor to review our security camera footage. We had something like ten different cameras, and throughout my tenure at this retailer I had gotten extremely proficient at snipping footage and capturing stills from our security cameras, to provide our loss prevention team and the police department. So while reviewing the footage, I found some great angles of the culprit concealing watches and a pretty good shot of his face when he entered the store. Needless to say, I knew what the guy looked like. We informed the other retail location in our area that we had been hit, only to find out the guy had gone straight there and, in the short amount of time it took us to figure out the watches were missing and review the footage, he had already returned one of the watches for store credit. Bold. Cut to about a month later, I am the only manager working again, and guess who enters the store? The shoplifter. He has returned to the scene of the crime, and guess what? He's brought his fiance. and guess what else? He's wearing the watch he stole, and wants to use his store credit to buy another watch as a gift for his business associate. Knowing that the best deterrent to shoplifting is excellent customer service, this is something I learned in luxury retail that has worked pretty well in my experience. Since you can keep an eye on things while also not being the jerk whose behavior is blatantly accusatory. I started helping the guy as he and his fiancée shopped while also whispering to all my associates that we needed to watch him because he had stolen from us before. He shops with us for about half an hour, playing up how excited he is about his watch and about getting one for his associate, but folks... He had no clue who he was up against. Five years of improv training, anyone? On the sales floor, I'm all smiles, trying on watches with him and his fiancée. But in the couple of moments I get to walk away and hand them off to my associate, I'm able to sneak off into the office and call the police and to confirm from my footage that this is 100% our guy. By the end of the interaction, I'm in the cash wrap with my associate, who is gift wrapping the new watch, and our thief kind of corners us to see what we're up to. We can feel him getting progressively more antsy, which is reasonable, since we're taking our sweet time finishing the transaction as we await the cops. We assure him our system is just slow, and he sees my associate clearly trying to perfect the gift's bow. As we finish the transaction and hand it him his ill-gotten wares, we watch as he hurries his uncomfortably seated fiancée out of her chair, so they can get the hell out of Dodge. They exit, and we see him through our window fumbling with his phone to reactivate the app-based rideshare moped they were using to travel. As he's doing this, the cops cruise by and just stop a few car lengths ahead. They get out of their car, and as they approach through the door, I look at them with eyes wide, frantically pointing at our thief. They go and arrest the guy literally just as he's sitting down on the moped with his fiancée, who is visibly baffled by this development. After all was said and done, the detectives come and commend me on doing their job for them. Shoplifting arrests after the fact rarely happen, so they were pleased to close the case. And they end up looking the guy up because he gave his real name for the transaction, and I find out he's some kind of jet-setting yoga instructor. I did see his yoga instructor bio, who travels the world and literally has Instagram posts with him wearing his stolen watch. Clearly the guy could have afforded it, but got some kind of thrill from shoplifting and returning to the scene of the crime. As for the fiancé, well, I have sympathy for her. It's probably better she find out his kleptomania before saying I do.
Anyway, I left that job a few weeks later to work at another company, where I'm happy to report I haven't had to file a single police report for the entire year I've been there. Two. So I volunteer for a driving service locally. A few hours per week, I drive with the elderly to doctors and to the shops and such. My only responsibility is to bring them from A to B and back, but as it is often very frail, weak or small people, I go into the shop with them and help them get their stuff off shelves and such because I want to. It's a small community, a number of people know me in the area, this is fine. Well, I drive on Mondays only, this happened last Saturday, and when I went to the shops to do my own shopping, a lady I had not seen before, not the typical Karen look, she looked like a normal woman in her mid-fifties, visibly stared at me as I walked past her. I think nothing of this, people are weird sometimes. I go about my shopping, she follows me. I know this because I do a pretty unusual tour through the aisles since I know what I need and wear. Near the register, we have walked past at least three uniformed shop employees by now. She just jams her cart in front of mine, blocking the way. Excuse me, since you're obviously free, why haven't you offered to help me? I stare for a good 15 seconds because I don't know what I could possibly help her with. That she thinks I work there doesn't occur to me. I've never worked a day of retail in my life. I'm a journalist. Nothing even close to what she's after. With... My shopping! If you need help, I suggest an employee. But you are free! I don't work here. Obviously not. This startled me. I didn't expect her to agree with me. Then why would I help you? You work for the right service. No, I'm self-employed. I volunteer there on Mondays. Then help me already! By now, other people have started peeking into our aisle, her shrill voice having alerted others. I can see one of the shopkeepers debate on whether or not to step in. Sadly, no. It's not Monday. If it was Monday, I still wouldn't help you because it's a members-only service. You're not a member. And if you were, I still wouldn't help you because my own responsibility is driving people around. I help sometimes because I want to, and I certainly don't want to help you. Well, I don't care. Okay then, neither do I. I give her a car to push and walk past with mine to the register, start unloading my stuff. The cashier is already giving her and me the side eye because she can see this isn't over. If you don't work here, how are you going to pay for that? You are going to pay, right? This startled both me and the shopkeeper. It's so dumb I'm literally speechless for a half minute. Apparently this shop is the only way to earn money now? I don't even know. No, I figured I was just going to rob this store, to be honest. It is Saturday after all. You're so rude! I pay for my stuff, she's still following me. Having abandoned her cart in the aisle. I stay near the counter to pack my groceries while she hovers around me still. You understand I'm not going to help you at all, ever, right? I'll get you fired. I'm self-employed. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to fire me. I manage to make it out the door, put my cart back, and carry my stuff to my car. I almost think I ditched her when she appears again next to me, yelling in my ear, That's not your car! I have a small set. Nothing fancy, but I own it outright. By now, honestly, I was just having a laugh at this bitch. Then why do my keys unlock the door? I've seen your car. I mean, we're standing in front of it. No, your real car, the Volkswagen. It dawns on me what she means. The local service has two brand spanking new giant seven-seater electric cars completely covered with stickers, ads, and so on for the driver service. Cars are white, stickers orange and green, very distinct. It's tacky as fuck, but the cars are great for people with limited movement because they're big. How anyone could think a car with all those ads belongs to a random person is beyond me, to be honest. That's not mine. This is. I just drive it sometimes. That's illegal. It's not? Have a great day. By the way, the store has probably put your stuff back by now. She ignores this completely as I get into the car, lowering the window as to not tempt her to open the door or something. How did you get this car? 
Now, I'm a fairly small woman, just over five feet. Very friendly face, generally quite approachable. But with a loud voice when I try. I tried. I fucking stole it, obviously! Murdered the owner as well! Keep yapping and I'll show you where they're buried! With that, I throw the car in gear. Absolutely stomp the pedal to the ground and race to the other end of the parking lot. I see her frantically scramble to what I assume to be her car, but by the time she's in it, I have pulled into the traffic and pretty much out of her sight. Just for fun, I parked a little down the road from my place next to another identical Seat. Same model, same color, very similar license plates, just in case she comes looking. Sadly, she didn't. I didn't see her or her car again. I was actually a little nervous that I'd get in trouble with the police or something for yelling that in case she reported me or something. But it seems she's not that crazy. 3. For starters, I have three jobs. A manager at a fast food restaurant, a volunteer staff member at my church, and a rep for one of those makeup companies where you make your own hours. Pay is all based off commission and I mostly join to get good discounts on their products that I love and make an extra buck. I've done this for a bit now and love my busy little life. I've never considered something like this happening, but here we go. I was at the church doing some things in the kitchen. Because of COVID, we can no longer serve coffee, but before service, I always make a pot for those who come in early to help set up. So mostly staff and worship team. While I was in there, a lady I don't know too well, who doesn't come often, came in to talk to me. I don't mind the company, and we started talking, even though technically she was not supposed to be in the kitchen. After the exchange of a few pleasantries is when it started. So you're the manager at Exburger, right? Yep. They are super great there, working around my church schedule and giving me special days off for events. Alright. So, I need you to make sure they get my burger right after service. I want no pickles and extra mayo, large combo with a Coke or Pepsi, whichever you have. I'll be right by after church, so have it ready for me, okay? I'm sorry, but I'm not working right now. You can call the store and place your order or do it through the app, but I'm working here right now. Oh, but you are the manager. I need my order placed. I don't want to have to wait in line forever. I'm not on the clock. I'm not in uniform. I have work to do here. You don't work here. You work at Exburger. I work here and there. When I am here, I am pastoral staff. When I am at Exburger, I am an Exburger manager. I work here tonight. I can show you how to use the app or give you the store number, but I can't place an order for you. No, I don't want to have to bother with all that nonsense. I'll just have to go to Exacto instead. I just don't understand why, as an Exburger employee, you can't just make my food for me after church. You work there. It's your job you get paid to do. After that, she just left the kitchen, which I didn't have much time to think on because I had work to do. She refused to look at me until after service, when she pulled the head pastor aside and was saying something, shooting daggers at me. I paid it no mind. Again, I had work to do, and I didn't want to assume she was talking about me. Whatever she has to say to the pastor is none of my business. Just before she left, she came up to me, gave me the most fake smile I've ever seen, and said she was sorry for bugging me when I had so much important work to be doing, and that I should have told her I had work to do. She still rarely comes and acts like nothing ever happened. Pastor never told me what she said, but made a big point to tell me that I was doing a great job that night. 4. This is one of those stories I think I will always have with me, regardless of how long it's been since I had a retail job. Back in the late 90s, early aught years, I managed a computer store in an upscale suburban area. Among my regular clientele were a wonderful husband and wife team, who had quit their corporate jobs to start their own business. They were awesome people and among my earliest regular customers. The idea behind their company was if your computer had problems, you could call them and he had a van full of parts and he could diagnose and repair your PC in your own home. No geek squad, no store tax, everything done all in the comfort of your own home. Pretty novel idea for the time. So, he bought from me hard drives, motherboards, video cards, you name it. He kept a stock on hand and since it was local, if he needed anything he would call and I would have it ready for him at a moment's notice. And this happened quite frequently. 
So apparently his business had a bit of success and he needed to hire some help. He hired a young guy in his late teens with spiky hair and huge shoes. That's just how I always remember the kid. And an older guy who kind of reminded me of Uncle Polly from the Rocky movies. Now during this era we had a brand of network cards. They were cheap, like 9 or 10 bucks a piece, and for what they were, worked great and were really easy to work with. Not necessarily an enterprise solution, but great for home machines. We sold a ton of them and they were just a great popcorn item. We had a standing order from our suppliers for a couple of cases of them every couple weeks, and we were usually pretty low stock by the time the next order came in. One afternoon, Uncle Polly employee comes in and picks up some items for our new fledgling company. Some cables, couple floppy drives, remember those? And a small stack of those network cards. He calls back a few hours later and says, Hey, one of those network card boxes were empty. That was odd. However, I'm sure stranger things happened. I had one ready for him and just handed it off when he came into the store a short while later. I had not heard of that happening before, but hey, it's retail. Something weird happens every day. Weeks go on, and every few days a network card goes missing. Problem is, it's always Uncle Polly reporting it. None of our techs putting them in the new PC builds. No other customers, it's always just this guy. So, finally they ordered an entire case of these network cards. I personally opened the case, made sure there was a card in each box, and then resealed the case. <sighs> Big shock! Uncle Polly came up with another missing card! Now, as previously stated, I was quite fond of the clients, and I was also very sure they had hired at least one dishonest employee. That I was out a number of cheap network cards was bad, but what else was coming up missing? What was happening when this guy went into other people's homes? So I spent a few days trying to come up with a way of diplomatically saying, your employee may be a thief, be careful. I definitely didn't want to offend these clients as they were one of my favorites. One afternoon, I called the owner to tell him about what had been going on. I can't recall exactly what I had said, but I know it wasn't my smoothest bit of conversation. Maybe I should have been more direct. Maybe I should have relied more on numbers, I don't know. Long story short, I offended him. They became strangers. I only saw anyone from their company a couple times after that conversation. It was always a spiky-haired kid, and he was extremely rude to me personally from that point on. So I imagine they had a company meeting that broke down into a the nerf of that guy session. I left the company a few months after that. I have thought of the situation and recounted the story numerous times since then. The company is no longer around. But the window for PC repair had most likely closed 15 years ago or more. I do wish them the best, whatever they're doing these days. Except the spiky-haired kid. He was a jerk. I can only hope between now and then I have gotten better at communicating difficult ideas. 5. So a little bit of background. I'm a shift lead at my local Taco Bell. Our lobby is currently closed and has been closed for several weeks due to COVID-19. It was my day off. I was in for a lovely day off lunch with my grandfather, who I don't see all too often anymore since moving to my current town. I left my mask at home, and the sushi place we were going to had a pretty generic mask policy, no big deal. My Taco Bell is about halfway between the sushi place and my house, so we stopped there so I could grab a mask. My grandfather parked in the parking lot and waited as I unlocked the door, went in, spoke with my GM for a short minute as it was lunch, grabbed a mask, and walked out. A rather irate lady stopped me outside the door, demanding I let her in as I pulled the door shut behind me. She claimed her order was messed up and had to go inside to speak to the manager and knew I could let her in. I did my best to explain to her that the lobby was closed and motioned to the door. She demands again that I let her in, knowing that I had a key, apparently she saw me walk in. I explained to her that it's policy not to allow anybody in the store as we're closed, and advised her to call the store. This isn't good enough for this lady. She continues to go off on me, throwing insults left and right about how they shouldn't be hiring disrespectful teenagers. I'm a 20-year-old with a slight baby face. I can see it. I explain to her again that the best she can do is call the store. 
inform a manager about the issue, and they would either have her pull through the drive through or if possible have a team member run the food out. This seemed to finally get through to her, but it still wasn't enough. She asked for my name, my title, shift lead, basically the first rung up from team member on the ladder, and informed me she was going to make sure I was fired for my attitude. Mind you, I was off work in plain clothes. My uniform consists of jeans, a button-up manager shirt, and black shoes. I was wearing khaki slacks and a blue blood donor t-shirt and white slides. And I just left the store after grabbing a mask to be berated by a middle-aged woman. I think that my attitude was warranted as my ride was waiting for me ten feet away. I said I'm sorry for the inconvenience of the closed lobby and got into my grandfather's car. I was worried as I had gotten my promotion to shift lead recently and didn't want to lose my promotion or my job over some lady in the parking lot. Roughly half an hour later, I got a call from my GM in the middle of lunch. I thought to myself, oh boy, here goes. As I answered it, the sound of laughing greeted me as he told me about the lady and how she hadn't even been through the drive through and was trying to get free food. As he was taking orders in the drive through and spoke to the lady face to face, knowing he had not rung in that specific order or seen her in the drive through and more recently in my job, we had an employee test positive and everybody who interacted with said employee had to quarantine until their test came back. I was not one of the lucky employees and managers who got 10 days off work. I spent every day closing with half the staff I'd normally have. Everyone's back now. All of the tests came back negative and everything is back to normal. I'm thankful for the stressful week and a half because after the very, very sudden shift from being an opening manager to closing shift every single day, we had one other manager who wasn't being forced to get tested, and I was the only one who knew how to close, and showing I could take care of the tasks outside of what I'm normally asked to do. I've been notified that in a couple of months, when I'm eligible for a promotion, it's mine if I want it. Taco Bell has a six-month wait period between promotions. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Adventures in Fast Food and Retail, number 105. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. You know, it seems to me the longer we're in this situation, the crazier the world gets. I mean, I get that we're all stressed. I'm certainly stressed myself, and I probably had uh, fewer, you know, adjustments to my my living and working situation than most people did. And even I'm feeling it. Um, but the important thing to remember is, no matter how frustrated you are, you don't get to make someone else's life a misery just because of it. Happiness is something you should spread about. Misery, not so much. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.